Could you imagine living life where nothing feels pleasurable? In this video, what I'm going to do is look at a potential novel antidepressant known as sarcosine. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please do me a favor and like this video and hit subscribe down below to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So today we will take a look at sarcosine, specifically looking at how sarcosine can affect the brain and how it can dramatically affect depressive symptoms in humans. So what is sarcosine? Sarcosine is also known as N-methylglycine and methylglycine. Now sarcosine is an endogenous antagonist of the glycine transporter 1, which potentiates glycine's actions on the N-methyldiaspartate glycine site. Now, sarcosine actually shares properties with glycine and D-serine. We know that glycine is a powerful, you know, health restorative amino acid. Well, sarcosine is actually more reliably absorbed by the body than glycine and D-serine. So a smaller, more practical dose of sarcosine would achieve the same effects compared to glycine and or D-serine. Now, remember that D-serine may possess similar effects to ketamine. So a lot of these compounds actually do share some similarities with each other. Some of them have opposite effects. So it's really interesting to see how they interact. This study here was looking at how sarcosine may oppose ketamine or actually looking at how it affects similar pathways in the brain. Now, the study was titled Beyond Ketamine, New Approaches to the Development of Safer Antidepressants. Now, what they noted was that sarcosine, a glycine transporter, which means that it actually makes glycine stronger and last longer, has been reported to exert antidepressant effects in both rodents and humans. Indeed, sarcosine showed antidepressant effects in some conventional animal models of depression after acute treatment, as well as reverse depressive-like behavior after chronic treatment for three weeks. Sarcosine increases the synaptic levels of glycine, a co-agonist of the NMDA receptor, and by blocking this glycine transporter one, leading to NMDA receptor activation. Although this effect is in contrast to that of ketamine, an NMDA receptor antagonist, Sarcosine has also been reported to exert acute antidepressant effects through AMPA receptor mTOR signaling. So this is really interesting research looking at sarcosine's effect on the NMDA receptor and also the AMPA glutamate receptor. Looking at sarcosine for mood enhancement, we can see here this study was titled Inhibition of Glycine Transporter 1 as a Novel Mechanism for the Treatment of Depression. Now, a proof of concept clinical trial was performed, which consists of a six-week randomized double-blind flexible dose study in 40 patients with major depressive disorder to test the hypothesis that sarcosine induces a more rapid and robust response than citalopram, which is used as a positive control. Again, citalopram is a commonly used antidepressant medication. Now in this study, sarcosine was significantly more effective than citalopram. After two weeks, sarcosine was superior to citalopram by approximately five points. And by week four, 40% of sarcosine treated patients met remission criteria. And by week six, 65% of patients were in remission. While the remission rates in the patients treated with citalopram at week four and six were zero, and 5% respectively. So sarcosine massively outperforming a commonly used antidepressant drug. What are people saying about sarcosine? Well, this person on Reddit said that sarcosine has completely changed my outlook on life. As of right now, I no longer suffer from anhedonia. Now anhedonia is the blunting or loss of pleasure. We can see this manifest in ways such as no longer enjoying exercise, no longer enjoying chocolate, no longer enjoying sex. like. Anhedonia is a blunting of the pleasure response. Now he said, I've only been on sarcosine one gram three times a day for almost a week now, but it seems to have completely obliterated my old self-destructively negative thinking patterns. I seem to be much more present in the moment. I'm no longer a slave to mentally dwelling on the missed opportunities of my past. I also don't find myself scrolling mindlessly through social media or Reddit, chasing some kind of temporary amusement. Sarcosine allows me to just get stuff done and prioritize my life in the smallest of ways that would have only a week ago seemed like giant leaps. 
It is by far the best antidepressant that I've ever experienced. I am better able to read people, micro expressions, body language, jokes, etc. For so long, I just didn't laugh or feel anything really. It's not that I'm now overwhelmed by emotions, but that I can better recognize this newly acquired sense of presence and self-awareness. My brain fog, apathy, and mental fatigue seems to have disappeared and has been replaced by this contented feeling of awareness. It's difficult to put into words. I just feel more human. He also noted that he's tried ketamine for the past for this specific purpose, but it just didn't have the same positive effect. So again, this is pretty interesting. Obviously N equals one. This is not a strong form of evidence, but I do not dismiss anecdotal responses. I think that it can give us good insight particularly when we match it with proper clinical trials, which I just demonstrated before. This other person noted, sarcosine is a highly effective and tolerable antidepressant. Personally, I find that sarcosine has been helpful in treating even rather severe depression. It's antidepressant effects apparent within hours and build up over the course of a few days to weeks. And this superior response time was likewise noted in the citalopram comparison study cited above. I've never observed any negative side effects from it or any discontinuation rebound or withdrawal effects whatsoever. It is possible to save it for particularly bad days and stop taking it when you feel better as many times as you want with seemingly no adverse effects at all. He said that it seems to pair well with D-serine. He's a direct NMDA receptor co-agonist like glycine itself. And he's also combining it with another herb, which I'll explore in another video. Now, looking at just this one case study, the study was titled two grams of sarcosine in schizophrenia. Is it too much? A potential role of glutamate serotonin interaction. Now, interestingly here, the authors noted that we report the case of a 23 year old schizophrenic patient treated with quetiapine and citalopram who was offered concomitant sarcosine treatment. After obtaining an informed consent, we started administration of two grams of sarcosine per day to treat persistent negative and cognitive symptoms. Now, the patient's activity and mood improved within two weeks, but in the following two weeks, the patient reported increased drive, activity, libido, unpleasant inattention, and irritability. Now, they ruled out hypomania and decided to decrease daily dose to one gram, which resulted in the reduction of drive and irritability. Activity and mood improved compared with his state before adding sarcosine. We suggest a sarcosine dose between one gram and two grams per day with an initial dose of two grams, but if side effects occur, the dose should be decreased to one gram per day. So as far as dosages are concerned, this is not medical advice, but about 500 to 1000 milligrams is commonly taken once to twice a day with food. So as far as if you want to explore more of these novel compounds, these antidepressant um, compounds, anxiolytic compounds, nootropics, do consider joining my nootropics course. It goes through over 180 different nootropics and compounds and with all of the things that I've accumulated and researched over the years packed into one epic course. So do consider joining that. And for those guys who are interested in boosting their testosterone, make sure you join my free webinar on boosting your testosterone. That's packed with some really useful information for guys looking to optimize their testosterone. But otherwise, that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next video.